Welcome to this very first series. My aim now over the next 20 weeks is to document my Ironman training journey to you. This is the very first time I've done something like this. And really what I want you to get from this is a better understanding of how I train, how I'm eating to fuel my body, maybe some weekly discipline, and also some inspiration for you to help you with any goals in which you're working towards. As of documenting this video today, there's exactly 20 weeks until my first Ironman event. So what actually is an Ironman? Well, there's really two you can enter. You either have the full Ironman or the half. And initially I'm going for the half. And if I'm being honest, it's really a stepping stone for me to do the full next year. Now I haven't signed up for one yet, but I'm guessing by me already mentioning this in my first video, I'm now potentially accountable for that. So what I have this year is a 1.9 kilometer swim, and this is in open sea, a 90.1 kilometer bike ride, and then finally a 21.1 kilometer run, or for most people as they know it, a half marathon. The next year is basically all of that, but times two. So you're probably thinking, why the hell would I even want to do that anyway? And it's a good question, and I'm going to get into really my motivation behind it and really why I signed up for this initially. But before I do, let me give you a little bit of a background in terms of me, what I do, and maybe my training history. So first of all, I'm an online coach. Me and Pavla, my wife-to-be, in only a couple months' time. This is why hopefully I can commit to uh, doing a weekly upload at the moment with everything else we've got going on, but we'll see. We run our online coaching business together. It's called The Empowerment Project. You'll be able to see more of really what we do on predominantly our Instagram pages, but we run photo shoots. We also like to help clients prep for different events, where whether it's uh, marathons or just generally wanting to feel fitter and more confident about themselves. Now really our primary aim is to help people have a lifestyle change in a way that feels manageable for them to stick to, that they actually enjoy and brings them personal fulfillment. It's really similar to the journey that both me and Pavla have been on. It's slightly different in the sense that she's been on a big weight loss journey previously. And for me really my health and fitness has helped me keep on top of my mental health. But both of us have made pretty substantial lifestyle changes over the last five or 10 years. And we've now helped hundreds of other people do the same. In terms of my background, I've really been, I'm guessing training like a bodybuilder for the last 10 years, maybe more. I've never really done any uh, competitions as such. So I wouldn't really say I'm a bodybuilder, but I've always been into strength training, really putting on size. I was a bit of a skinny kid. Uh, and all I ever wanted to do was get constantly bigger and stronger. And then when I got to about my mid twenties, I got to the point where I, I no really longer focused on this. If anything, for a short period of time, I actually stopped training. I fell out of love for training. And when the lockdowns hit a couple years ago, I stopped training for a little while and actually put on quite a lot of weight. So really over the last few years, my only primary aim was actually just to get back to a point where I felt pretty good about myself again. I was training regularly and I reformed all the old habits that I had for a good 10 years that I lost throughout that lockdown period. So I actually prepared for something initially being a photo shoot, a physique related goal. It allowed me to really focus, stay on track and push for a solid four or five months and actually just exceed what I ever managed to achieve before. I was really happy with the results, but then I was back to the same point where I was before. I no longer really wanted to get any leaner, any stronger or any bigger. While I still have a passion for the gym and I still work out regularly now, and now I've reformed that habit once again, I wanted something else that physically tested and challenged me. So I thought, what better than something that's an endurance event, maybe quite an aggressive endurance event. And my uncle's actually, Mark, probably listened to this at some point, hopefully, <laughs> uh, has always been into things like Ironmans. So something like that really interested me in the sense of like, okay, this is a really big thing to prep for. It's not like something that you can just sort of prepare for for a month and just participate, you really need to train for a solid six to 12 months before even considering entering the event. So a challenge like that really actually interested me in the sense it gave me something to focus on for an extended period of time before I even had an opportunity to give just one of them a go. So that's really where it stemmed from. So not even 12 months ago, I started off running and then really only the last five or six months, I've actually got into cycling and swimming as well. I maybe naturally had a bit of a good ability with running just because I was light and strong, but the bike and the swim by no means was I even had any ability with them whatsoever. So it's really just a case of been chipping away. It's just the, the weekly constant discipline of showing up, doing the work, putting one foot in front of another. Some weeks inevitably I feel like there's progress. There's been weeks where I also feel like I'm going two or three steps backwards, but really just enjoying the process, turning up, putting in the work and just as a whole feeling like I'm moving forward every sort of month or so. This is also very similar to the way in which I approached my photo shoot last year. By doing the photo shoot, it was a solid four or five months of predominantly focusing on just bringing down the body fat. Inevitably, there were some weeks where I felt like I was progressing a lot and other weeks where I felt like I wasn't at all. So really, this is the same across the board, regardless of what you're trying to achieve. You may notice in the short term that you're making really good progress, but there were maybe other weeks where you feel like you're actually going backwards. The most important thing is that you have a plan, you're executing that plan consistently, and then you're looking at the data subjectively and more so over at least sort of 14 to 28 day periods rather than sort of weekly. And that's what I've been doing. That's what my clients do. And therefore it gives them a little bit of a better idea of, okay, 
that are they moving in the right direction or not. So this morning, I just finished off one of my last training sessions for the week. It was a long run, it tends to be on the weekends. There's always some long discipline, whether it's normally the bike or the run. So this week I did a 21K run, so a half marathon. Last Sunday, I did a long bike, which was about 80 miles or around about 120K, something like that. And then next week, I'm actually putting these two together now, and what would be the start of some of my brick training. So brick training will be when I put the bike and the run together and do them back to back. Next weekend is where I'll be giving this its first real go. Each week, I wanna be putting out a little bit of content, giving you an insight firstly to my training, my nutrition, how I'm recovering in between sessions, how I'm trying to keep injury risk as low as possible with all the volume of training that's going on at the moment. So I'm still trying to strength train three or four times a week. I'm running one to two, maybe sometimes three times a week. Same again with the bike, one, two, potentially three times a week. And the swim, I'm in the pool the most. If anything, it's the thing I'm the worst at. So therefore, if I'm not good at it, I wanna be better at it. I know the more I show up and throw myself at it, it's gonna be unreasonable for me not to get better at it at some point. We're making improvement in that area. I'm doing it more regularly because firstly, swimming is just lower impact. So I can put my body through more intensity, more frequently while still keeping the injury risk down. But it's also something that I generally need to improve upon. So each week, I'll be giving you a little bit of an update now over the next few months. Like I said, there's 20 weeks to go until the actual event. So hopefully you find this some of this content insightful. Maybe let me know in the comments some things you would like me to talk about specifically. I can give you an idea, for example, of like what I have uh, pre-workout, what I have post-workout, sometimes what I have an intra-workout. I never really used to do intra-workouts, but now some of these bike or runs are going on for some of them even several hours. Intra-workouts are important to fuel my body. I'm carb loading sometimes the day before to have energy for the next day. And while doing all of this, my aim is to still maintain a good physique in terms of muscle mass and still look and feel good. Finally, just to finish with, some of my biggest struggles and lessons so far that I will share in more detail in other videos. First of all, the swimming. Like I said, it's something that I realized I really, really, really struggled with to start with. So I got myself a swim coach, even being a coach myself, I wanted to be accountable to someone to do something that I know I'd probably not do as well as I could have done by having that extra bit of guidance and accountability, but also just go to someone that knows a lot more than me about a certain thing. So this is exactly why my clients will come to me. This is exactly why I look for help elsewhere. I just want to fast track the progress with things I'm not necessarily as good at as I could be. The next thing then is injuries. I've already managed to pick up a few niggles. I've had like a runner's knee and a tight IT band from in increasing volume too quickly with some of my running. I've learned from this and that's stuff that I'll share more about over the next couple months. Also weight fluctuations. It's, it's been a bit challenging really to get my head around it if I'm being honest because some weeks now my training is so aggressive. I'm guessing if I'm carb loading or I'm doing like a lot of intensity through the lower body on the bike or a run, sometimes like my water retention levels can go up and down quite a lot. And when I was on the photo shoot prep, when I was achieving a physique goal, my weight may have fluctuated by about a kilo a day, which is normal for most people. Sometimes my weight can fluctuate by at least three or four kilos a day now, which sometimes can, yeah, it can get in your head a little bit. And obviously for me, like I coach my clients on this, I give them a bit of perspective about it. I tell them not to worry about it. But when, you know, you're seeing these fluctuations yourself, even then you're like, oh, am I putting on weight? What's going on here? And while like my goals are not necessarily focused around physique related things at the moment, I still want to be looking and feeling good. I still want to stay relatively light because it will help when it comes to covering distance more faster and effectively. And finally, I've just had to make a few more lifestyle changes if I'm being honest. Even going through the photo shoot prep, there were opportunities for me to be able to sometimes like eat out a bit more regularly, have booze a bit more frequently. While I can eat out and stuff like that now, I definitely ain't drinking nowhere near as much as I was before. This is something like I enjoy, but I've also had to accept that maybe I'm not gonna be able to do it nowhere near as regularly as I would like to, just because booze just really buffers performance. And if I'm going out and drinking on a Friday or Saturday and then have a long run or a bike ride on a Sunday, I've tried it a few times, it doesn't work. <laughs> so there are things that I'll be giving you more insights to over the next couple months. Hopefully it's giving you a bit of an idea to this series and what I'll be covering. And I'll be back ideally in about another seven days time to talk about how the next seven days of training goes. If you wanna see more of this, then just make sure you hit the subscribe button. There might be a bell icon here. I'm not too sure how YouTube works, <laughs> but if so, hit it and then you'll be notified when I post.